try to imagine what it will be like to go to sleep and never wake up. Now, try to imagine what it was like to wake up having never gone to sleep. The average adult needs six to ten hours of sleep each night. You might be wondering why we need to waste so much time doing nothing. Or, if you live in a society whose sole focus isn't on productivity, <coughs> you might just be curious about the mechanisms of sleep. Either way, welcome to today's discussion on the psychology of sleep. The circadian rhythm can be thought of as a biological clock that's modulated by your hypothalamus in the brain. It runs at about a 24-hour cycle and sets how alert or how sleepy you feel. It's the thing that makes you a night owl or an early bird. And it actually affects several aspects of the body, such as when certain hormones get released. For example, melatonin gradually increases in the evening, and adenosine increases starting in the morning. This gives us some predictability with the body. For instance, we know that the body is at its lowest level of efficiency between 4 and 6 a.m., and asthma, cardiovascular disease, and rheumatoid arthritis are at their worst around this time. We also know that rote memory and learning via repetition is best between 6 a.m. and noon. Another thing we've learned from studying the body's rhythm is that from noon to 6 p.m., the sense of smell and grip strength are also the strongest. Apply this how you will. On top of our body's schedule throughout the day, we have several stages of sleep. Sleep is divided into two types, rapid eye movement, or REM sleep, and non-REM sleep, which has four stages. You will cycle through all stages several times in a regular night, but the REM stage will be increasingly longer and deeper each time you revisit it. So with that, let's look into each stage. Stage 1. This stage occurs in the transition between wakefulness and sleep. Looking at most people's brainwaves in this state, we notice that they resemble brainwaves of someone who's very relaxed, but still awake. In fact, people will often report that they haven't been asleep if they're woken during this stage. During stage two, the body goes into a state of deep relaxation. Sleep spindles and K-complex patterns appear here. A sleep spindle is a rapid burst of higher frequency brain waves that may be important for learning and memory. A K-complex is a very high amplitude pattern of brain activity that may, in some cases, occur in response to environmental stimuli such as noise. Thus, K-complexes might serve as a bridge to higher levels of arousal in response to what is going on in our environments. Stage 3 and stage 4 of sleep are often referred to as deep sleep or slow wave sleep. It's much more difficult to awaken someone from sleep during stages 3 and 4 than during earlier stages. Interestingly, individuals who have increased levels of alpha brainwave activity during these stages often report that they do not feel refreshed upon waking no matter how long they slept. The last stage is stage 5 or REM sleep. The brainwaves associated with REM sleep are very similar to those observed when a person is awake. During this period of sleep, dreams occur, as well as sleep paralysis, both of which we will cover more in depth in another video. These stages are all part of a sleep cycle, which lasts 90 minutes on average. It generally takes this pattern. You are in non-REM sleep stages for 65 minutes, then in REM sleep for 20 minutes, and then back to non-REM sleep for 5 minutes and then this repeats throughout the night. But between cycles, you're actually not asleep. You're in what is known as the twilight zone. Usually you aren't awake long enough during this time to remember, though if there is an environmental stimulus like noise or a drop in temperature, it's enough to wake you up. We tend to assume that there's only one way to sleep, being awake during the day and sleeping during the night. However, this is relatively new and has only become the norm since the Industrial Revolution's longer than normal working hours. This type of sleep schedule is known as monophasic sleep, or only sleeping once a day. A biphasic sleep pattern occurs when you sleep twice a day. Normally, it's a long sleep at night that's five or six hours, with a nap during the day that's from 30 to 90 minutes long. 
In fact, before the advent of electricity, phrases like first sleep and second sleep were commonly documented by historians. It's even suggested that sleep disorders like insomnia are caused by humans abandoning the sleeping pattern for a monophasic one. Polyphasic sleep is characterized by sleeping more than twice a day. One of the most common examples of polyphasic sleep is that of infants, who have multiple naps throughout the day and longer amounts of REM sleep than adults. Usually, adults who have this kind of sleep will sleep four to six times a day. There are three common forms of polyphasic sleep. The everyman consists of a long sleep time of around three hours with approximately three 20-minute naps throughout the day. Uberman is only three hours of sleep per day in the form of six 30-minute naps throughout the day. And Dymaxion is a pattern with only two hours of sleep per day in the form of 30-minute naps every six hours. Why can't we stay up for weeks on end doing things we enjoy instead of playing dead for eight hours a night? As for many things in psychology, we don't know for sure, but there are several theories. Restorative theory says that sleep is used to save the body's energy by lowering our body's metabolism. This theory also posits that REM sleep specifically is useful for storing memory. Restorative theory also suggests that sleep is a time of repair as well for the body and the mind. Developmental theory suggests that sleep's role is primarily to help the brain develop. This was proposed after researchers noticed REM sleep as being a major component of sleep for babies in utero, as well as infants. Preservation theory is an evolutionary theory that says sleep helps to keep us away from trouble. For humans, nighttime was more dangerous for us. Other predators had advantages over us in vision and stealth. So sleeping during that time kept us away from exploring during the night and being taken down by predators. There isn't one of these theories that are decisively right, and all of them have a little bit of evidence to back them up. So right now, it's best for us to take information from each of these perspectives. Those are a few of the major theories on why we need sleep, but what happens if we don't get good sleep? The American Psychological Association lists a lot of effects such as irritability, moodiness, disinhibition, and issues with decision making. These are usually the first signs, but if you continue to not sleep after this, you may experience apathy, slowed speech, flattened emotional responses, impaired memory, and an inability to be novel or to multitask. If people are deprived of REM sleep and then allowed to sleep without disturbance, they will spend more time in REM sleep in what would appear to be an effort to recoup the lost time in REM. This is known as the REM rebound, and it suggests that REM sleep is also homeostatically regulated, just like other bodily functions. There are several causes to not getting good sleep. Stress is the number one cause for short-term sleeping difficulties. Drinking alcohol or caffeine-containing beverages in the evening, strenuous work before bed, mental or physical, being a shift worker, and jet lag can contribute to sleep problems. Environmental factors such as room temperature, noise level, light level, children, and partner sleeping habits can also influence sound sleep. There's also a meta-analysis that showed that bedtime access and use of media devices was significantly associated with inadequate sleep quality, poor sleep quality, and excessive daytime sleepiness. Those are all regular things that can contribute to occasional and repeated issues falling asleep or staying asleep. However, there can be more serious issues that a professional may have to help with. These are referred to as sleep-wake disorders. Insomnia, or the inability to go to sleep or stay asleep, is one of the most common sleep disorders. Sleep apnea involves breathing interruptions during sleep that usually cause daytime sleepiness and fatigue. A sleep study is usually done to diagnose this disorder. There are also three circadian rhythm disorders. Jet lag is one that happens when you rapidly travel across more than two time zones. 
In fact, eastward travel leads to worse symptoms than westward travel. Shift work disorder is another type caused by non-traditional working times such as split shifts or graveyard shift work. Things like the frequency of changes, magnitude of each change, and the length of shifts can affect the severity of symptoms. Lastly are the altered sleep phase type circadian rhythm disorders. These can occur when the circadian rhythm for the individual isn't on the 24-hour cycle or is out of sync with the desired sleep-wake times even in the 24-hour cycle. There are other sleep disorders as well, such as narcolepsy, which is daytime sleepiness and sudden muscle weakness, as well as the parasomnias, which are abnormal events and experiences that happen during sleep. Today we covered the circadian rhythm, the five stages of sleep, different sleep schedules, theories on why we need sleep, what happens when we don't get good sleep, common causes of bad sleep, and sleep disorders. In the next video, I will be covering tips for better sleep. If this video provided some value to you, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you.